I've been looking forward to creating a video around the PowerShell Application Deployment Toolkit for quite a while now. Let's get stuck in. You might remember the Zoom application I packaged up. I did it a couple of times. I did it through MSI and then I used the Win32 method. And, you know, both of those are fine. MSI less so than Win32. In fact, when we look at the Win32, we can actually use some scripts when we deploy these applications. And one of those scripts could be a pretty intense script. That is the PowerShell Application Deployment Toolkit. You might have noticed when you were looking at that video, if you haven't looked at it yet, please take a look. Just click the link at the top somewhere over here, I think, and take a quick look at the video. See what I did there. And I'm going to jump straight into a version using the PowerShell Application Deployment Toolkit. So at the top left here, we have PSADT. It's just a tab group. You won't see that in your browser, obviously. So take a look at the GitHub. Latest version of this is 3.9.2. So very simply a case of finding the zip file. Just choose it, download. And when you've downloaded it, I'll show you exactly what you get. You have this zip file, right click that, open it in Windows Explorer, and you get two main folders. One is examples and the other is toolkit. Now the toolkit is the thing we actually need. You can use examples if you want to find out more about this in your own time. I need the toolkit because I'm gonna start using it. So I'm gonna copy that toolkit. And I actually already have done this, so bear with me while I just get back to that folder. It's in D, example, and toolkit. I've just copied the contents of toolkit. I'll prove it to you in downloads. Go back into that. In toolkit, we have app deploy toolkit, files, support files, and these three files here. Go back to my example folder. And that's exactly what we get. Also, I've placed my Zoom installer file in here. That's the same Windows installer, the same MSI file that I showed you earlier on. So let's use the PowerShell Application Deployment Toolkit to deploy this MSI. Go back into the toolkit, find Deploy Application. Now in here, we have a Deploy Application, which is an application file, as you can see here. And we also have Deploy Application, which is a Windows PowerShell script. If we choose View, Show, File Name Extensions, you'll see that we have, go back into that folder, we'll see we have the deployapplication.exe and deployapplication.ps1. The executable needs to stay as it is. That's exactly where we need it to be. We're going to play with deployapplication.ps1. Just open that. And actually, I don't have... VS Code on this machine. Let me grab that. All right, close that down. I'm going to open this in VS Code. Always. Okay, so we'll close down the welcome screen, maximize this, and I might even zoom in because this is a little bit... Okay. So at the top, we have a synopsis around the script. We have a description of how the script works. We have some parameters that are defined here, some examples of the use case. I'm gonna scroll all the way down this because I understand all of this, but it, I would appreciate it if you could take a look at all of those details. If you haven't yet looked through the PSADT, please read through all the documentation. It's a great level of detail you have in here. Once we get through that, we get to the variable declaration and you can tap in things like the app vendor, the app name, the app version, which was three, uh, what was it? 513162. Rolls off the tongue. The architecture is 64. Okay, I'm done. I'm pretty happy with what I've got here. That'll do for this example. I'm gonna scroll down further. And all of this is just routine scripting that we can just leave alone. We don't need to do anything with this at all until we get to, in this case, line 178, but it's anywhere after the end variable declaration section. This is where it says, if deployment type is not equal to uninstall, therefore we're installing it or repairing it, and deployment type is not equal to repair, therefore we're installing it, do these things. And these things start off with pre-installation. 
So for example, we might want to show a welcome message and close maybe Internet Explorer, allow some deferrals if we aren't expecting the user to be ready to install this immediately. And the, the pre-installation tasks could be, you know, close Zoom, close Outlook, and uninstall any previous version of Zoom. It's simply a case of tapping in underneath this line here, under line 185, just tapping in the uninstall command for the existing version of Zoom that's installed. I'm not going to show you that right now. We'll just move straight on. But that is definitely possible within these pre-installation tasks. So if we just scroll down, you can see the next section is called installation. And we have this section up here called zero config MSI installations. If you want, if you are creating many, many applications and you need to automate that as much as possible, it's possible to just use zero config MSI installations, take a look at the documentation about how all that works to make sure you do it right. For me, I'm going to just use standard MSI installation, which are in the perform installation tasks here section. As you can see, I've pre-typed this in, but we have execute MSI and the action is install. And the path for the MSI is in dir files, which is a variable. And the file is called zoom installer full. Let me show you how this matters. So we have dir files, zoom installer full. Dir files is very simply this files folder here. If I go in there, the next file you find is the zoom installer full MSI. This is defined somewhere within this script package. Next, the parameters I want to use to install this MSI are quiet and no restart. And that's pretty much it. It'll install absolutely fine after that. If we scroll down, the post installation tasks, for example, you can do whatever you want. Post installation, you have full free reign of all the things that can possibly happen post installation. You could run another executable, another MSI, you could do anything you want. You could write a script, you could write individual lines of code here that will do certain things. It's very customizable. Next, we have if deployment type, if I'm, there's the if, if deployment type is equal to uninstall, then we are uninstalling it. So we have to do the un uninstall piece of work, which here, you can see I haven't quite filled out yet. Let's go back to my existing application that I've got go to properties, find the uninstall command that was pre-filled for me here, back to Visual Studio Code, and just tap that in. Oops. Just tap that in, tab that across, just there. And so that is possibly how you could do this. I will caution though, that's not the correct way to do that in the PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit. So, and actually what I'm gonna do is tap in the correct command here which is execute MSI. And then just tap in the path of this MSI, which is this one here. And make sure it's in single quotes. And we can remove this line, the incorrect line just above it. So now we know that this will uninstall the MSI for us. We also have post uninstallation task if you've got any cleanup tasks that you need to do right here. And then we also can configure what happens during the repair option. In this case, I don't have any repair options that I need to configure just now. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to save this file and close down VS Code. Heading back to our folders, you can see we have this example toolkit files. So this content here that I've just selected is the content we need to get to our target devices. It's the app deploy toolkit modules and files and scripts. It's the files itself, which is the MSI that I've just added. It's support files that are things like logos and banners and that kind of thing. And then we have the actual executable. We have the config file for it, which is language, uh, translations, all that kind of stuff. And then the script that we've just modified. So those are all the things that we need to package up. So just like before, 
we're going to package them up in the Win32 app. I'm going to head to my local disk and just go to demo again and grab my Intune Win app util, which is just here. And in fact, I'm going to run it from here and reference the files that I've got in the toolkit. So from here, open the command prompt. It's going to be in this folder here. Just run that as admin source folder. Let's grab that. It's example toolkit. Now I want all of these files. So I'm going to just grab this location here. There it is. This setup file. In this case is deploy application dot exe. And the output folder where we want this to go to is going to be a folder called packaged. Just put that there. Okay, all done. We'll head over to the Intune portal now. So straight up to here. Now I've <laughs> packaged Zoom a lot. This this isn't the only, none of the ways I've done this are the only way to package Zoom. Zoom is not the only application in the world. Zoom is just an example of an application that I'm using. It can be any application, obviously. It can be any script, obviously. I'm just using Zoom because it happens to be very simple to install. So I'm going to go to add. I'm going to go to app type. I'm going to choose Windows App Win32. Select. In the app package file, I'm going to go ahead and grab my, not this one. That would be a bad idea because that's the existing one that I already had. That's the Zoom output one that I created the other day. I'm going to choose D, example, packaged, and then this Intune Win file that I created just now with you. Choose open. Choose OK. You can see that's set to deployapplication.exe. That would be very confusing if you left that as deployapplication.exe for every single application that you packaged up using the PSADT. Don't do that. That's not a good idea. What we should do instead is give it a proper name like Zoom for Windows. And in the description, we can give it a more or similar title, publisher name, Zoom, I assume. Uh, it was version 5.0.16, I don't remember. We'll choose next. Now in the install command, this is quite important. We need to get this right. And thankfully, it's incredibly simple. We're going to tap in deploy application dot exe right there. And for the uninstall, it's going to be not that, that's a great hint, but that's not it. Deploy application dot exe dash or minus deployment type uninstall. And we're installing it for the user. All the rest of this we can leave, choose next. The architecture is going to be x64, minimum OS, something current maybe, choose next. Rules format for the installation uh, detection, we're going to choose detection rules, choose add. And we'll go for MSI and just need to grab this product code that we had for this. Now at this stage, I will admit I made a slight mistake when I was doing this. The setup file that we configured should have been the MSI file that we're installing. And the reason it should have been that is because it would have pre-filled this information about the detection rule for us. My bad. Yeah, I, it's been a while since I did this. Let's just assume I didn't make that mistake and move on. So that's the MSI protocol I'm going to use for the detection. So we'll choose OK. We'll choose Next. I have no dependencies in this particular case. We'll choose supersedence and again, 
nothing in this case. And I'm going to deploy it to all of my devices, choose next, and create. Now, one of the benefits of using the PowerShell Application Deployment Toolkit is that you don't need to wait for it to be deployed via Intune before you actually get to test it. Let's take a look at what I mean. I'm going to just minimize this while it's uploading all that content we've just done. Close all this down. And then I'm going to go to our folder here called Toolkit, and we have deployapplication.exe. Now, you know that the script I'm using to install this application was simply deployapplication. .exe. Let's see what happens when we run that. It's going to run deploy application.exe. After a few seconds, you can see exactly what's going to show for your users. We have the PowerShell Application Deployment Toolkit banner across the top. It says the application is about to be installed, and uh, it's the Zoom app 5.13.12602. And we're able to defer this if we need to. Let me just show you what that means. If I choose defer, now that's just killed the application. The application itself would report a failure into uh, Intune because it didn't, it wasn't able to to install. It will give a specific code to Intune, and then Intune won't immediately redeploy it. It will be whatever whatever period you've got between your redeployment, which could be one day, could be more. Let's assume that we make it happen immediately again, just as a quick test. You can see the remaining deferrals is set to two. That's going to happen however frequently you have the installation running on your device. It is likely to be every day or so. So let's choose continue. It says installation started with that pop-up box called installation in progress. It says installation complete. Now it's installation is complete because it finished installing it. And then we have that you can customize the text to appear at the end of the install. Maybe you want to fix that before you get it out to your end users. Choose OK. Let's see if Zoom's installed. And oh, spelled Zoom wrong. There it is. Now that wasn't there before. I haven't used this device for Zoom before. So that's definitely a, a new application that's just been installed. And it worked. So that's exactly what we wanted. We can probably clean up that application deployment toolkit a little bit in the future as well. Hopefully, this has given you an insight into what the PowerShell application deployment toolkit can do. And I'm going to be diving deeper into these features in a future video. See you next time.